Ever hear of a company called Ookla? I'm willing to bet that you've probably used their service, even if the name doesn't quite ring a bell. Ookla is the company behind the super popular speedtest.net and speedtest apps for Android and iOS. People, myself included, use their site or their apps to test our internet connection speeds. Now because of this and the fact that over 10 million people use speedtest on a daily basis, this means that Ookla has a ton of data on connectivity, devices, etc. They can even drill down into this data, for example, into specific locations, or more interesting for our use case here in this video, chipset and OS level. Well, it turns out that after over 1 million results from Ookla and Speedtest, devices running Qualcomm's Snapdragon 845 processor on T-Mobile and AT&T here in the US outperformed those with Intel modems, specifically the Intel modems running in iPhones, in every single measurable metric. And keep in mind that Ookla, the one who's running the tests, is a third party and a trusted one that actually put their name on the results. Now that data, by the way, worked out as follows. On at and Qualcomm Snapdragon 845 devices saw an average of 64% faster download speeds, 41% faster upload speeds, and 27% lower latency than the iPhone Intel modems. On T-Mobile, the numbers weren't much different. Qualcomm Snapdragon 845 devices saw an average of 68% better download speeds, 23% better upload speeds, and 35% lower latency. And lastly, not only did the tests show that they were better just across the board, they also showed that they were better in poor coverage areas. In these worst case results, as they're called, there was a 22% increase in download speed, a 22% decrease in latency, and a whopping 192% increase in upload speeds for the Snapdragon 845 devices over the iPhone Intel devices on AT&T. Now, T-Mobile users with the Snapdragon 845 saw 141% faster download speeds, 154% faster upload speeds, and 22% less latency. Now I decided to test that out for myself near my office in Manhattan, where I knew that there was a T-Mobile tower. And in my real world test, the results were even crazier. While the iPhone was getting around 50 to 60 megabits per second down and only like three or four, maybe even five up, the OnePlus 6 was getting closer to 90 down and 50 something up. I even tried the Galaxy Note 9. And that one did about 120 megabits per second down with 40 to 50 up. Okay, so I reached out to Qualcomm to try to figure out why exactly this is the case. And it turns out that it comes down to two things really. Firstly, the modem in the Snapdragon 845 chipset uh, called the X20, by the way, supports two technologies that the iPhone modems just don't. The first is called 4x4 MIMO, short for multiple input, multiple output. And it's a way of multiplying the capacity of a radio link using multiple transmit and receive antennas. And while MIMO itself is used in a lot of our normal communication devices, from cellular communications to Wi-Fi 802.11n and 802.11ac, the 4x4 part indicates that they are able to use four transmit and four receive antennas. Now these antennas are actually all around the Snapdragon 845 devices, and it allows them to transmit and receive data easier and faster. The next technology is LAA, or License Assisted Access. It allows the Snapdragon 845's modem to not only use the radio spectrum that the operator, like at and T-Mobile in this case, normally use for their LTE, but also the five gigahertz unlicensed spectrum that's allowed to be used by anyone. It can then combine these frequencies to create a larger pipe of bandwidth for data to travel on. Kind of clever, right? The other thing that according to Qualcomm makes a big difference, even when not using those two technologies, experience. These technologies I just mentioned really kind of pertain to downloading data. As far as uploading data is concerned, they're all kind of using similar technologies for the most part. But even with that, Ookla and their data shows that Qualcomm's X20 modem is doing at least 192% better on upload speeds on AT&T in areas of poor coverage, for example. This comes down to signal processing algorithms in the modem. Now the process of the modem being able to identify the data signal coming from a tower versus all the other noise being bounced around. It's not easy to do, truly. Qualcomm maintains that they have over 30 years of doing this stuff and that experience matters here. Also, that 
The other guys, well, they're newbies by comparison. Now you guys, if you wanna learn more about that whole test, click the link below. Uh, it is pretty interesting to read. Uh, otherwise, let me know what you guys think of all of this in the comments below. Uh, and if you like this video, please thumbs up it or share it. It's greatly appreciated. And don't forget to check out the rest of my channel. If you like what you see there, please subscribe and ding the bell next to where subscribe so you get notified when I do new videos. As always though, regardless, thanks for watching.